Good evening. Our celebrant today is Father Stan, and we will start by singing Come to the Feast. Good day, everyone. We gather today to worship our God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On, the, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a, fe a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold, our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord from whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, shepherd me, O God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry. I can still do all things in him who strengthened me. Still, it was that kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with the glorious riches of Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of the servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets, and they gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? but he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and his feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. If we go to the history of God dealing with his people, so frequently those interactions between God and people happened on mountains. In fact, in the scriptures, we hear a lot about the high places, places where people set up opportunities to really encounter God. And so they would put a pole on the mountain, and they would put a a large stone which and then in that, at that mountain, in that high place, they would encounter God. God would come down from heaven, and the people would, in turn, offer a sacrifice to God. And so there would be that connection here in those high places. And certainly, if we look at the Hebrew Scriptures, we find God meeting people in all different types of mountains. Certainly, Moses met God on Mount Sinai. We know that in the Transfiguration, Jesus was transfigured on a mountain. All of these things were very important, and there were places where God would encounter his people. But perhaps of all the mountains in the scriptures, the most important one was Mount Zion. Mount Zion was the mountain on which Jerusalem was built. And so in many ways, we see the scriptures speaking about all the things that God is going to do from Mount Zion. Mount Zion. In fact, if we look at the prophet Isaiah, we hear that in a number of the chapters of his book, many references are made to mountains. In chapter 2, we hear about the mountain of Mount Zion being raised above all the other mountains. And then at that mountain, that the sword through the plow, which made it to plowshares, and the spears into kunimos. In other words, at that mountain, there would be peace. And then we also see in chapter 11 that in, at Mount Zion, in this high place, the lion and the lamb would lay down together. The child would play in the adder's lair and not be harmed. In other words, there would be peace on that mountain as well. And then in 20, chapter 25, which we heard today in our first reading, we know that at this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. He will give them good food. There will be a great banquet held because God is dealing with his people. God welcomes all kinds of people to his banquet. Our gospel makes that quite clear. But he also makes it quite clear that people have to accept the invitation after they are invited. And so we see that in our our gospel story today, the parable was told about the king who invited people to the 
babysit for his son, but we know that many people had other excuses. One had to go to their, their farm, another one had to go to do their business. And then we know that some even mistreated those who invited them in the first place and killed them. So obviously the king, the, the, the man who invited the people to the feast, wanted all kinds of people to come. They were invited, but obviously they had to accept the invitation, and they had to be properly prepared. That was the other point we heard at the end of the gospel. The man who came in without the wedding party, he was not prepared, and so he was expelled. I think in many ways we see the, the great example of the wedding feast, of the feast that God has given to us here at the Mass. Here at the Mass, we are all welcome to come and to worship God, to share food with God, to be with Him, and to obviously allow God to deal with us, and to come to us, so that in the scriptures that we hear, in the sacrament that we receive, God and us are come together and we are joined together. But obviously, we need to be prepared. Take what we hear uh, in, uh, in, in the church, but we need to take it outside as well. So in many ways, then, we are called upon to be God's people in this earth, people who come to, you might say, the spiritual mountain, which is the church, which is the place of encounter with God. As we encounter God in our lives here, we bring God into our lives each day that we live. Please stand. Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confidently, we offer our concerns to our compassionate God. For the unity of the church that all believers may share in the feast, we pray to the Lord. For peace among nations that all people may live without fear, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer for physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being, that those who are ill may be healed and made whole, we pray to the Lord. For this assembly, that its members may be drawn ever deeper into the Paschal mystery, we pray to the Lord. For those who are ill and listed in our Book of the Sick, that they may receive the healing power of Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially John Deaver, Anne McHugh, and Joseph DiNardo, that they have eternal life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Generous God, you lavish your bounty on your people. Your Holy Spirit bids us to ask for your mercy and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our response is many and great.
sharing of our lives with one and all. Many and great are seeds upon the seeds grow. Take now and eat the covenant fulfilled, the bread of promise and life. The wheat grows from springtime sharing of our lives with one and Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience you have, we have been restored to these gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, be acclaimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Yes. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is As Grains of Wheat. Are gathered in 
Let us pray the Ignite Prayer. Heavenly Father, pour forth your Holy Spirit to inspire our parish community, stir in our souls a desire to renew our faith and deepen our relationship with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Ignite us that we might truly hear, believe, and live the good news. Grant us the confidence to proclaim your message to others. Strengthen us that we might go forth and witness to the gospel in our everyday lives. Sanctify our words and actions. God our Father, we pray that through the Holy Spirit, we might begin to make all things new as we seek to transform our parish. We pray that we might renew our commitment to your mandate to minister to one another. We pray that we might be restored to the vitality of our baptism as we accept our mission to go out and witness to the saving grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. Let us first thank our musicians for the beautiful music that they gave us. I'd like to remind you that the offertory contributions can be made by dropping your envelopes in the box in the lobby, or by mailing checks from the, to the office, or if you'd like to sign up for Faith Direct, there is information in the bulletin about that as well. Morris Catholic High School in Denville is accepting applications for the class of 2025 and for transfer students for this academic year. To learn more about Morris Catholic through the admission events, they have both virtual, vir virtual and in-person events. Uh, there is going to be an open house on October the 18th from 2 to 4 in person, on Wednesday, October the 28th from 5 to 8, and also there is going to be a Zoom opportunity to see the school on November the 12th at 7 o'clock. Uh, these, all this information will be available uh, in our bulletin as well. The parish office is, go is going to be closed Monday because of Columbus Day. Have a good week, everyone. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Be gracious to your people, O Lord, and do not withhold consolation on earth from those who strive to for heaven through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our closing song is We Belong to You.
we be 